welcome. We're excited that you're taking the time to join us this um, early evening. Um, we would like, we're excited to share with you what we've been working on in this crazy year, trying to be as flexible as possible and um, create some new offerings so we can continue our connection with schools and teachers and help serve them as much as we can, particularly this year as we are in facing such unprecedented times. Uh, my name is Jessica Selmer. I'm the Education Manager at the Baltimore Museum of Industry, and my colleague Beth is also on the call. Yes, thanks, Jessica. I work with Jessica and happy to be here. I'll be monitoring the chat if you've got any other questions or you can use the Q&A function. I'm just here to kind of help behind the scenes. Jessica's taking the lead. All right, and so we'll get started. Um, so, if you ha so a few of you have not been to the Museum of Industry before, just to give you a little bit of background, uh, we're located in Baltimore, in South Baltimore on the Inner Harbor, so we're right on the water. Uh, this is the waterfront of our museum here in this photograph. And we were formerly a oyster cannery from the Platt & Company Oyster Cannery, and half parts of our building are as old as 1865. And then there's some other parts that are built a little more recently, but still quite old. And so our museum focuses on the industries that are important to Baltimore. And we'd like to tell the story of the workers and the industries that help not only Baltimore grow, but also the entire nation. Um, generally, every year, we host around 30,000 students and teachers and our many different hands-on programs, um, as well as our guided tour. And this was pre-pandemic. Uh, this year, we had to switch everything up. We decided that we would not be hosting any on-site programming this year, uh, just to be as safe as possible. And we know most schools would not be able to attend anyway, and so we just wanted to be what's best for our, and safest for our staff. But also, um, we wanted to try to figure out ways that we can connect with those schools still. So we created two different offerings which we'll go into. The first is our industry investigators, which is our virtual guided tour. And um, we have a program that we share our tour through, um, uh, through and we share it over Zoom or as well as any other video conferencing platform, depending on what works best for the schools as some counties um, and schools to some is just don't allow certain programs like either Zoom or they prefer other things like WebEx or Google Meet. So we're really flexible trying to connect with them in the way that they, they generally work. And uh, we usually have these sessions, they're about an hour, they're an hour in length. We tried to work, make them a little longer when we are testing them further over the summer. But um, we think just everyone's capacity of being on Zoom kind of it kind of takes only an hour that you can kind of really hold it so that we wanted to keep that and work with the kids as best as we can and not keep them too long where they'd start to drift. And so our participation sessions are designated to about 30 as a maximum, mostly because we wanted to be able to interact and engage with the students. And once we got past too many above 30, it was a little harder to work with the different students as you're sharing your screen and working through the program. And at the moment we are, charging 125 per session and um, multiple sc schools that have larger audiences, larger classrooms than 30, they usually book, book multiple sessions for that either that day or that week. Um, it's been pretty flexible so far. To go along with these programs, we have um, these hand, uh, these uh, printable PDFs that we've, uh, we've created that follow along the tour and so we send that to the teacher. We also have it in Google Forms. So if the teacher would like to have it as part of their virtual classroom as a post visit material or if they're able to um, get it to their students where they have it printed out for them either pass out through school pickup or sent to the families um, at home for them to print it out. Um, we've had a mixed degree of how many people, what, which people prefer. And, um, but we have these different activities to do for the different age levels for we have two um, kinds of uh, the, the guided tour. We have industry investigators, which is for third through eighth, and we have junior industry investigators, which is pre-K through second. And so for the younger audiences, a lot of the prompts and the activities that go along with the tour are more craft driven and ask students to think about things and draw pictures or um, 
make something from the from the activity sheets we've given them and then the older students which is the third through eighth graders that we primarily are working with um, it's more kind of a fill in the blank um, open-ended questions for them to work in their age range and so in addition to these these either Google slide post visit materials or the um, printable PDFs we have throughout our tour um, primary source documents that we share and we ask students to interpret and um, analyze and then we also have video demonstrations of our working machinery and so I wanted to give you a, a quick demo of that and hold on one moment I'll bring that up All right, and Beth, just to be sure, can you give me a thumbs up? You see the virtual tour? Great, sorry folks, I got a little sidetracked there. So this is how we share our screen. We have this really great program um, that was done for us actually pre-pandemic that we were able to turn into our virtual tour. And so as we go through our museum, we visit the different galleries and ask students questions about what they're seeing, what the different objects we have in the museum, and we talk about the different themes that we um, generally hit throughout of our tours. And we also have our, have our primary source documents that we share with, with them as well. And we're able to do that. Um, through just switching into a different screen share. And um, we also have our movies that we have of our staff demoing um, items. So we have in this movie, we have my colleague Mike who is shucking oysters as a demonstration. We also have movies of our machines as well. bring great and this is just a demonstration of one of the machines we have and so normally they would have sound I'm not sharing the sound at the moment just so I can speak over it but but we're able to one of our best parts of our guided tour in person is what we are able to demonstrate these machines that are really old and wherever we're able to bring the museum to life through these different machine demonstrations and so we're, we're able to translate that into our virtual tour by having these recorded um, machines instead and it's been working fairly well i think one of the things that surprised us is how engaged the students are over the zoom even though um, when we first started this last spring as schools were we're all um, forced to be teaching from home. We found that um, students really interacted well with the Zoom and answered our questions. We either have them physically raise their hand or use the raise hand function within the streaming platform. And uh, it's been working well to, um, to have them interact with us. Beth, did you wanna share add, something? Yeah, I just wanna add that, um, we were able to kind of launch this in its beta form in the spring for free to groups who had scheduled experiences at the museum but couldn't come. And so based on that, we really got a lot of good um, formative evaluation, you know, so to really kind of like test it and then adjust and tweak and change as we went so that over the summer, we offered it to camp groups as sort of like the next stage. Um, and so I do really feel like we have a, one, a, a well tested and really well developed product now that we can share this fall. Um, and on that point, I think it's, um, it's kind of like how all school programming should be developed in museums, right? To sort of start with what are the needs and interests? And then you test and test and test along the way. Um, so in that way, it's been very gratifying. Yeah, 
great, great point. Um, and it, with the virtual tours, um, it's been really great to just interact with students again. It's one of the things that we really missed um, after we were abruptly closed. And uh, the students have been really great so far that we've been working with, um, both over at the end of the spring and over the summer, and a little bit as we've had walked into this new school year. All right, one of our second offering in addition to our digital virtual tours is our city kits. These are activity kits, which are hands on. And we have two different options. Each of the city kits are in individual boxes that are given to students um, that are provided for students. And each box contains everything that they need to work through this activity with um, lesson plans and the supplies and they can do all the tools they need to engage with from their home or from the classroom, depending on where their school is, is in that process. And currently the kits can either be added to a virtual experience, which help um, enhances the experience. So a lot of the themes that we are talking about on our tour are also present in our kits. And so it can be kind of a post follow-up activity for the class to either do together or for students to do independently and then check back in with their teacher. Or the kits can be ordered completely separately. And currently they're being charged $8 per student per kit. And um, we have two options. The first option is our Cannery City Kit, which is based on our Kids Cannery program, which is one of our most popular hands-on activities that schools work with or do every single year. And in this ac activity, we have different lesson plans, four of them, that encourage students to think about the process and the work involved in preparing, preserving, and providing foods to communities. And we do this through um, two lessons that work primarily with primary sources, with questions and answer, um, fill in answers um, based on the analyzing the historic images and then also thinking on the process of how food is canned as we are in a historic cannery and we canned fruits and vegetables as well as oysters. Um, and then in our third lesson, the students are asked to use the supplies in their box to create their own canned food. And so you can see in these photographs here, we have some students that that created that uh, one created chicken soup, I believe, and uh, the other one had some mixed vegetables. And so they worked and created those cans. And that's what the third lesson focuses on. And then the fourth lesson kind of rounds everything up by asking students to either choose to work within a math game that goes through these different steps of building a cannery or a writing um, prompt where they get, write a letter Thing, imagining that they were a, a child working in a factory and what their life would be like. And this kit is aimed for second through eighth graders and includes curriculum aligned activities. These are all connected at the varying age levels, grade levels to curriculum, and as uh, well as the easy to follow lessons, which have been both in paper form within the box that will be with the students, but also um, have been created in Google Slides so they can be shared in their virtual classrooms um, so teachers could grade the work that's in their virtual classroom instead of having to worry about getting those papers back from their students. The next kit is based on our Lights On program, which is a STEM activity where students explore how light helps us to see and communicate. And we talk about different um, types of communication, primarily focusing on lights and sound. They then have um, a flashlight where they get to test their skills using Morse code. And then they are tasked with creating a light communication device made from the box that their activity kit came from. So it's one of the things we really wanted was for that box to be used for something. Um, so every piece of that kit that they receive is used in this project. And this kit is primarily for first graders, but works for second graders as well. It's connected directly to a unit in the next generation um, science curriculum. And um, in the, the top picture there, where it looks like a boat, that is kind of like what is what they create. It's like communication device, but it's basically like a little, a little light bright. All right. And so we also are working with homeschool groups in addition to formal schools, both public and private, we offer opportunities for groups of 10 or more of homeschool families or independent families who are figuring out what they're doing this year in addition to their school. If they're in a learning pod, we're offering um, them to book as well as they're, as long as they're a group of 10 or more. And um, groups that are smaller than that, we have virtual homeschool days that we're offering 
every month. Our next two are coming up in November and December. And we have the older kids, the younger kids in the morning and then the older kids in the afternoon with the option of purchasing and having us mail the city kits to their houses. And so uh, our first two have gone fairly well and we're looking to have more people participate in our next two. We are also offering on our site, and we hope that this is really helpful for teachers, um, these asynchronous activities. We have a curated YouTube channel where we've created our audio tour, um, like if you were visiting the museum, um, with short two to three minute um, clips of historic images with our museum educators reading um, scripts they wrote about the different stops throughout the museum. And so these really, um, supplement the virtual tour really well, as well as um, the Cannery City Kit and provide students with more information. And also they just work well as something for students to engage with and learn more on their own time if they're interested in um, learning for Baltimore. And the teachers can use them too in their lesson plans if it, if it works out for that. We also have our a lot of this work we did right as the pandemic was starting, um, but we have different quizzes and scavenger hunts and crosswords just to uh, kind of try people's brains, get them thinking, and um, something for kids to do if they're bored at home. Um, and we also have that virtual walkthrough that, that I showed you earlier. Um, that's available for anyone to look at. It doesn't have any interpretation. It doesn't have that live guided educator working with the students, but if they want to someone wanted to check out what the museum looked like or go back and refer to it after having an experience with us, we have that available on our website as well. Um, one of our other pieces that, or that we offer to students every year, um, but in particular this year, if, if teachers are looking for hands-on items for kids to do while they're stuck at home and not in the classroom. We have these Maryland engineering challenges that the museum is host to in the latter part of every school year. And these are extended hands-on projects that build to a statewide competition at the spring, normally with hundreds of students in a room this year. Um, for the pandemic, we have switched to everything being virtual, but we're still continuing on with our different challenges and we have uh, multiple challenges for each grade level, elementary, middle school, and high school that um, we task students to work within a group or as individuals this year um, to build a project, to report on that project, and then prepare for their oral presentation and for that project to be tested on site at the museum and streamed while um, virtually for all participants. And a lot of those rules and the details can be found on our website. Um, and these are just different pictures of last year's competition um, where students are asked to build a safe razor that safely travels an egg um, on a crash test like the one in the top right. Uh, we have high schoolers and middle schoolers are asked to build robots and it's a little bit different than what you'd imagine a robot would look like but the students create it from from a kit where they have to wire and solder everything themselves and get that robot to walk a course across a table. And then we have for middle schoolers, the future city, on the, which is on the left, where the students are asked to imagine um, what a city might look like in the future. Uh, and every year there's different themes and they're asked to build that in SIM software as well as create their own diorama. And all these challenges this year have been adapted to work well safely from home or safely from school if, if some schools are back in school um, without having to gather too much in person. All right. And if you are interested, we also have some upcoming programs that is for anyone, not just um, teachers, not just students, but anyone who might be interested. Uh, on tomorrow night, we actually have a lecture with one of our museum educators, Jack Burkert, at 7 p.m. And it is on the shipbuilding industry in Baltimore. And then we also on Wednesday have a really awesome program partnered with the Reginald F. Lewis Museum in Baltimore um, called Workplace Matters, which is focusing on systemic racism and economic opportunities. And it's going to be a panel discussion and it's, it's going to be a pretty interesting program. So if you are free on Wednesday evening, I encourage you to come to sign up, register. They're both free events. Of course, donations accepted, but um, that's only if you can manage that. Otherwise, we encourage you to come, listen and learn. All right. 
Um, I don't want to take too much of everyone's time, but um, this is ways you can connect with us further through either our email as well as our, um, our website or um, through Twitter, Instagram, or Facebook on BMI at Work. Um, if you have any questions, I'd love to hear that in the chat. If you want to put uh, any questions you're having there, we'd welcome any kind of engagement. And we'll be following up this, this presentation with a survey, so we'd love to hear from you there. But otherwise, um, let us know if you have any thoughts. And thank you for joining us this evening. It was really, really great to speak to you.